All right, all right. Good morning, good morning. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Let me crank that up for you a little bit. Crank it up. Good morning. All right, yeah, let's clap with it this morning. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? All right, come on in, come on in, come on in. We got the callers on the line. We got Instagram coming in. We got Facebook coming in. And one that sapphire, she's probably the first one in. Come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in. We got a little music going for you this morning. It says, in the middle of it. Go ahead and praise him anyway. Praise him anyway. You're in the middle of it. You're in the middle of it. You are in the middle of it. Come on in. Come on in. This is Pastor Cardell. And I'm with you this morning. This is the every day until. Everybody say every day. Every day. Every day until dynamic devotion and prayer. We do this every single day at 8 a.m. in the morning. Every single day at 8 a.m. in the morning. So come on in. Come on in. Come on in with your praise. Come on in with your claps. Come on in with your hearts. Come on in, come on in. Uh, callers, thank you for being here. IG, thank you for being here. Facebook, thank you for being here this morning. It's, it's a Saturday morning in North Texas. It's a nice day outside. If you haven't had a chance to go outside this morning, go ahead and just uh, maybe stick your head out the door and breathe in some of that fresh air. That means that you are still alive and God has some purpose for you to do in the earth. So come on in, come on in, come on in. If you're with us on today, make sure that you are liking Make sure that you are hitting some comments. Make sure that you are sharing. If you are around the country and you are around the nation and around this world, make sure that you are liking, make sure that you are commenting, and most importantly, make sure that you are sharing the word of God. It's a good, happy morning. It's a good, happy morning. We got ambassadors all around the nation. We got ambassadors all around the world. We're building that program up strong. And I'm telling you, when it fully, fully launches, you're going to be amazed at the things that we have uh, done so far in, in the buildup of it. So, ambassadors, thank you for being here. If you are also here and you want to start a watch party, let me go ahead and back this music down so y'all can hear what's going on. If you are here and, and, and you are starting a watch party, Thank you so much for being consistent in starting a watch party. Why? Because we say the breakthrough, your breakthrough is on the other side of your consistency. So thank you for being consistent. Thank you for being a consistent caller. Thank you for being consistent on IG. Thank you for being consistent on Facebook. Thank you for being having a consistent life, something that God can say, I see you, and last time I was with you, I said, hey, can, can I trust you? He knows that he can he, he can trust you. We're on the wall this, today. This is the every day until dynamic devotion and prayer. Every day until dynamic devotion and prayer. Why do we say every day? Because, again, every single day, your breakthrough is on the other side of your consistency. Until there is no expiration date. We're going to finish it when we whenever we finish it, until God says so. Dynamic. The word of God is dynamic. We do a devotion. We break it open. And also we do a prayer at the end. So that's why we call it the every day until dynamic devotion and prayer. Every day at 8 a.m. we're on the wall. Uh, what does it mean to be on the wall? Just like they are in the city of Jerusalem. Boy, I got some more updates on that. Uh, just like they are in the city of Jerusalem, there's the Wailing Wall. And people are praying there every single day, 24-7. Someone is there. There's, there's webcams. There's live cams. You can go there. Right now, you can go there right now. There's a picture of the wall, a virtual uh, stream, a live stream. Woo, it ain't dead, okay? It's a live stream of the wall, and people are sitting there praying and, 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 and bringing their petitions to the Lord because of some things that are placed on that wall. And man, listen, uh, in Psalms 122, it says, pray for the, the city of Jerusalem. Pray for uh, peace in, in that city. I, I don't know if you've been keeping track of the news, okay, the last couple, within the last 35 days or so, uh, the United Arab Emirates and uh, this, uh, the country of Bahrain, boy, they, they, they're they trying to make some peace with, 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 uh, with, with Israel, okay? They're trying to make some peace with, the, with, with, with what's going on in Jerusalem and everything. Why? Because the Bible said you pray for the, the city of Israel, you pray for J Jerusalem that there may be peace with you, that you may be prosperous. So I'm telling you, continue to pray uh, for Jerusalem. Why? So that it may be better for you, all right? Hey, I'm just giving you some nuggets. I'm just, I'm just telling you what the scriptures say. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. On the bottom of the screen there on Facebook, there's a link that is pinned there. If you are in a position where you need some, some faith-filled prayers or you just have a, a prayer request, go ahead and hit that link. 
At the bottom of that link also, there's also an opportunity for you to send a praise report because, hey, God's doing some great things in your life. And uh, let's go ahead and encourage some other people. Put it in there because we share it with the team and we share it with, with some other people, of the, those, those praise reports, and you'll be amazed at what God is doing in the lives of people. Why? Because we're on this wall. I'm believing that those people in those other countries are making uh, peace with the with, with Israel because we're on the wall over here in, in McKinney, Texas, in, in the North Texas area. So come on in, come on in. It's a couple of little updates for you. Uh, before, I, before I go and do that, if you're on the call, and if you're on IG, you can also go to admin at Amazing Church. Okay, go to admin at AmazingChurch.com if you have a prayer request you want to put in there. Or even if you're on Facebook and there's something that you just don't want to put out there in the, in the general population, send it to that, that special box. Okay, send it to that special box. Uh, admin at AmazingChurch.com and your prayer request will be uh, seen there as well. A couple things that we got going on. Hey, Project Red, Project Red, I got some red on the day, okay, Project Red, R-E-D, we want to make sure that you are registered to vote, okay, make sure that you are educating yourself to vote, okay, and make sure that you actually drive to go and vote, okay, uh, Amazing Church, Project Red, make sure that you are registered, make sure that you are educating yourself, and make sure that you are driving to the polls. And most importantly, most importantly, make sure that you are praying for a, a, a kingdom-centered uh, push from God, okay? You can look at what this one is saying and what that one is saying, but ultimately, we want to know and do what the what our Father above is saying. So when it comes down to that, okay, make sure that we are desperately seeking His wisdom, desperately seeking what He wants to have us to hear in our ears so that we can make not a political decision, got that? But we want to make a godly decision, okay? The other thing that we have going on uh, at our church, and we said we're gonna, we've already put this out, we put this out that it's not just uh, us here in, in the McKinney, Texas area, but uh, I think I think we got it up on the on the web. I'll double check. I think we got it up on the web, but I'll double check. Uh, the card that we were going to put out there, the thing that we're doing next week, uh, in the, next week, yeah, next weekend, uh, not in our city, not on our watch, not in our city and not on our watch. That's when we're going to go out there and we're going to pray at the school buildings, all of the schoolhouses, the administration building, the bus yards. So if you want to be a part of that, I need you to go to our website, okay, www.amazingchurch.com. Make sure you go there and register. That way we'll know where to assign you, where we can put you and give you your oil and give you a card that you can pray over that particular area for. And then you can just go out there and we're going to dispatch people. We're going to dispatch it here. We're going to dispatch it wherever you are and you'll be able to do it wherever you are in the city where you are. So thank you for doing that. Got a good news update for you. Uh, this, this Tuesday or Wednesday, we got to go drop off some red bags, okay? And those red bags are filled with goods that we have for our teachers that is at the school that we've adopted. And I thank you from the top, bottom, and side of my heart. Uh, Pastor Derek and the rest of the team, we all thank you from the top, bottom, and side of our heart. Man, the supplies came in. The, the dollars came in. The bags are filled right now. They're, they're sitting at the church ready to be uh, deployed. So go ahead and give yourself a big hand clap for that. You came through. You came through. Send up those hearts. Send up those hearts. That's... You, you you don't realize how you're serving and you're not even serving. Come on. <laughs> you're making it possible for someone else to be able to do their job with ease, okay? What, what, what is serving? Making sure you're able to be able to help someone to do their job or what God has called them to do with ease. You're like, well, I wanna still want to be a part of that. Well, the, the bags are filled, but we, if you want to still donate, uh, you can go to the, the, our site. There's a give button there. You can go to uh, that site. I think it says red bag. So you can donate whatever dollar amount you, you want to. And we'll still take those dollars and go buy some more supplies. Because we want them not to just have enough. We want them to be overflowing. So come on in. Come on in. First timers, thank you for being here. You have come into what we call the Everyday Until Dynamic Devotion and Prayer. We do this every single day, 8 a.m. Central Standard Time. What we do here is we, we go through the Word of God. We call it the inspiration. We give a breakdown of the Word of God. We call it the motivation. And then we, we'd be amiss to let you go without saying how that you can apply this Word of God to your life. So if you're a first-time caller, even if you've been here for a while, go ahead and let me know what city, what state you're from, what city, what state, what country, where you're watching us from. We apply the Word of God today. Why? So that we can live life a better way. Your life 
might be good, all right? It might, it might just be good, but we hear, we say it can always be what? Better, all right? So yeah, if y'all ready for this alma, if y'all ready for this alma, the inspiration, the motivation, and the application, uh, I, I got it here for you. I got it here for you. I didn't, I didn't, as the uh, people say, I didn't know I was going to be on program, okay? But when I got the words that said I was going to be on program uh, this morning because, you know, our, our pastors, all right, they, they, they must have had a heck of a honeymoon, okay? Now, they, they've been celebrating 26 years, 26 years. It's been their anniversary week, okay? So give it up for them. Give, give, give it up for them. 26 years, anniversary week. And uh, Pastor D said, hey, can you, can you cover for me? I said, well, I ain't going to ask no questions, all right? Y'all can laugh it up. I ain't going to ask no questions, all right? But I got you covered, Pastor D. We, we got you covered. We, we take care of the man of God, and the man of God is always in tune with the vision. We, we do the work so he can stay praying on his knees. Y'all got that? We do the work. We facilitate that he can do what he has to do to lead such a people as us. If y'all ready for the armor this morning, go ahead and send those hearts up. Go ahead and send those hearts up. Go ahead and send those hearts up. If you're on uh, IG, go ahead and send those little hand waves. If you're on, 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 the, on the call, go ahead and clap right where you are. I can't hear you because uh, I got you on mute, but go ahead and clap. Go ahead and clap. Go ahead and clap. So here, here's the word. Here's the word for the day. Uh, again, I, 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 me and my wife went out to the restaurant last night, and I was saying, I said, honey, I don't know, uh, you know what, what the Lord is going to say as far as us uh, having a, a word of God from, for, for today, for this morning, and sitting there at the restaurant, that was some, some wallpaper. It was one of these old, old restaurants, somebody that then took a restaurant where a house used to be and turned the, the, the house into a restaurant. And so we're looking at this wallpaper, and I said, well, that's some, that's some weird-looking wallpaper, baby. And she's like, yeah, it, it looks kind of funny. I said, it got grapes and stuff all over the wallpaper. And, uh, you know, you can see a lot if you take time to look. <laughs> you can see a lot if you take time to look. And so I said, Psh, that's, that's the message right there. We're we going to talk about grapes, and we're going to talk about the vine. Y'all might, might know where I'm going already. You might know where I'm going already. So the message from today was inspired by some wallpaper at a restaurant that used to be a house. What, won't he do it? Come on. What? Won't he do it? All right, so here's the inspiration. Here's the inspiration. Inspiration comes from John 15, 5 and 6. John 15, 5 and 6. It says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, get this, bears much fruit. For without me, go ahead and say it, without me, you can do nothing. If you break the word nothing down, there's no thing. There's no thing that you can do without him. You, you got that? You ever heard that before? Without me, you can do no thing or nothing. If anyone does abide in me, you say it, in him, he is cast out. If, if, well, hold on, let me back this up. I don't rush through the word. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. Read through it real fast. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I, and I in him bear much fruit. You got that? Much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me... He is cast out as a branch and is withered and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. Are you excited about the word today? That's the inspiration. The word of God brings inspiration. Uh, I, I, see, I see those hearts and everything going up and I see a lot of activity going on here because uh, I think, I think y'all might know where I'm going. Can you believe that God will take a piece of wallpaper in an old house that didn't turn into a restaurant from, I don't know how old the house was. To, to bring you an inspirational word from the word of God in John 15, 5 and 6 to talk about branches and wine. I'm, I'm just amazed. I'm, I'm just amazed. So here's, here's the motivation. Here's the motivation. The motivation is the breakdown of the word. Okay. Here's the motivation. Check your roots and bring some fruit. <laughs> all, that, all John was saying was to check your roots and bring some fruits. All right, check your roots and bring some fruits because here's 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 what you need to understand today. Here's what I need to understand. Here's what we need to understand. The roots draws all the nutrition nu nutrients and the water from the soil. This goes up to the branches. If you were planted in me, 
It matters where you're planted. If you're planted in me, it goes from the roots to the, the trunk of the vine. The nutrients is pulling. It is literally pulling the nutrients out of the ground through the roots to the branch, to the leaves. And at the end of these leaves, there's what you call some, some clusters of grape, some clusters of grape. If you are connected to the truth, okay, here's the, here's the thing. If you are connected to the truth, you got to bear some fruit. If you are connected to the truth, you got to, you must, you shall, you have to bear some fruit. Now, how do you bear some fruit? You got you to share the gospel. So if you haven't been consistent in hitting that share button, or if you're on the call, you haven't shared, and the IG, you haven't shared, I'm, I'm just trying to break it open for you. Because Jesus teaches the truth about God. And the truth about God is that God reveals who Jesus actually is. Jesus said, I am the truth, the way, and the life. No man cometh to the Father except they come by me. What, what men, what women are you bringing to the Father that you are bringing into the kingdom Via Jesus, okay? The, the viaduct, the, the, the way, the truth. The, the truth is revealed. God said, listen, I've given you a vessel, and I'm telling you that this vessel is connected to me. This vessel is something that I've placed in the earth so that you can have more fruit. Well, who, well, who are the fruit? The fruit of people, okay? Are you sharing your fruit with people? Or are you keeping all your fruit in a basket to yourself? Come on, come on. Because here's, here's some of the questions. Here's... Here, here's some of the questions. Lord, I, I want to make you happy. He said, show me your fruit. Lord, I want to make you proud of me. He's saying, well, show, 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 show me your fruit. Lord, I, I need some direction in my life. He said, show me your fruit. Do you want an acronym for it? S-M-Y-S. -S. Show me your fruit. Lord, I, I want to do your will. You know, I just want to do what you want me to do. He said, show me your fruit. Okay, where is your fruit? Yeah, I'm giving you some inspiration. I'm giving you some motivation so that we can do the application. You say, Lord, I need some peace in my life. You say, show me your fruit. Jesus, uh, you know, uh, all this really ain't that easy. He says, I know it's not easy. And you know how I know he said he knows that it's not easy? Sometimes we kind of run through scriptures really, really fast and we don't take time to understand what it is. In the very first piece of it, he says, I am divine, you are the branches, he who abides in me, and I in him bear much fruit. You know what it means to bear? Okay, when you, when, when you bear something, have you ever seen a fruit, an orange or something at the end of a tree, and how weighty that tree is? Okay, I mean the branches are out there, but man, there's so much there's so much fruit on this thing. It, it, it is literally bearing up under the weight of supporting and producing. <laughs> it is bearing up under the weight of supporting and producing. All of that fruit is, is bearing up under the weight. And once that fruit is plucked, the branches kind of go back up and it starts wanting to bear fruit all over again. Okay, so, so bearing fruit takes work. Bearing fruit takes a little bit. You can't just throw people away, all right? You got to bear up under it a little bit. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm just trying to break it down for you. What does bear mean? I like to say Pastor Tanya style. Bear means to tolerate something that you don't like. <laughs> you say you got to bear much fruit. It takes effort. It takes work. That's the inspiration. That's the motivation. And, and what, what, what about the application, okay? What about the application? Because Jesus already said uh, a pattern for us in the motivation. He says, if you add to the kingdom, uh, the kingdom will add to you, basically, all right? But here's the application. They're ready for the application this morning. Get juicy. What? Get juicy. Yeah, juicy fruit? Yep. That's not, that's not just the gum. I don't know where they come up with that name, all right? But here is the application. God says, I need you. I want you to get juicy, Go ahead and get juicy. I, I forgot my, uh, my other drink in there, but I got something here for my, my illustration. Let me put it right there and get it ready. He says, if, if you get cut, okay, because the enemy himself, the devil is roaming around like a, like a lion, seeing who may, he might devour, seeing who he may, he may cut, seeing who he may get an opportunity uh, to expose, okay? So here's the question. If you get cut, Okay, what is going to come out of you? 
All right, he wants you to he wants you to be juicy, but he don't want you to be just some 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 off brand juice. Okay, he wants you to be premium juice. If I had a balloon right here, and and I had that that balloon filled with orange juice, and and I took a blade and I and I cut that that balloon. Guess what's gonna come out of that balloon? Orange juice, right? Y'all y'all got me. And if I had another balloon, and and if I told you I had uh, some 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 strawberry juice or lemonade in there, and I cut that balloon, what's gonna come out? Some some strawberry lemonade type stuff, right? And so I'm asking you the question: When you are in what will seem to be a compromised position, <laughs> if you are in the, what will seem to be a compromised position, and if you get cut, what's what's gonna come out of you? Okay. Blessings in life and cursings can not come out of the same vessel that God has said is anointed to do his work. Okay, if you get cut, what juice, what is going to flow out of you? So the application for today is get juicy, get juicy, get juicy. All right, wherever you are planted, it really makes a difference. Okay, and while you are planted, there, you need to make sure, we all need to make sure that we are sowing. And when we talk about sowing, we're not talking about dollars, okay, all together. What about your time? What about your talent? What about your wisdom? What about what about your your energy? All right. If you are sowing into a certain place, if you are planted in certain uh, to a certain place, whatever is coming out of you should be the things that you are planted out of or into, so those things can flow out of you into other people's lives. You are supposed to bear fruit. Again, what does it mean when you are bearing fruit? Man, you got to be, guys, it's okay to be pregnant. What? Pastor C, what you talking about? Guys, it's okay to be pregnant, okay? Ladies, you know what it is or what it means to be pregnant. You have to bear up under the weight of pregnancy so that something can come through you that may be birth in the earth. So in the scriptural text, guys, you can give birth, but there are some things that you have to wait. You said there are some things that might you that you're gonna have to bear some fruit so that it can be well with you and your household. All right, man, listen, if if you haven't hit the share button by now, okay, if you haven't hit the share button by now, man, shame on you. All right. I'm just gonna say it, shame on you, because people come to the kingdom by sharing the word of God. You ain't got to bring them all in. Some plant, some water, and it is who? God that gives the increase, okay? Some plant. You got to sow a seed. Put a seed in the ground, okay? Some water. That person's going to come along, but it's God who puts it all together because of where they're planted, and he gives the increase so they may, they, they may come forth. Can I give you a real-life application? A real-life application? When I was living over in the in the islands, okay, there was this this lady, and I'm telling you, this this woman, she she hated me, okay. She she was about 65 years old. I think I was like 35 years old at the time, and uh, she knew what I stand for. And I said, hey, I'm I'm all about this uh this, this Jesus thing, all right? You know, I'm a I'm a Jesus freak. They have a song back. I'm I'm a Jesus freak. So that, that's that's where I am. That's that's where that's where I, I want to be, and that's that's where I need to be. And so she's like, well, the church that you are going to, that's a, that's a cult. All right. You are, you are going to a cult. That's what I hear. Everybody call it a cult. I said, well, Hey, you know, that's, that's what the people say. Uh, that's what the people say. But most lives start off with, they say, and I heard. So if you, if you're going to go on with the, they say, and I heard, you might be facilitating a lie until you experience your, your, yourself. And so it was all cool. You know, I was cordial. She said, don't you, don't you share no word with me? Don't you share no gospel with me? Don't you preach to me? Don't you bring me no Bible? Don't you do anything in a religious manner as untowards me? I said, that's cool. All right. Because I know a fact. Okay. I can preach the gospel all the time and don't even have to use a word. All right? She didn't understand that, but I did. And here's the other side of that. They, they paired me up with this woman. Okay, They paired me up with this woman as, 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 a, as, as a trainer kind of speak. And so, and again, she said, listen, now we pair it up. I just want you to know that we ain't friends. We just got to work together. Uh, Miss Estelle, I get it. You, I'm, I'm going to honor what you have asked of me, and I'm going to stay in that vein. And so, man, we worked together, we worked together, and we worked together, and everything was cool and cordial. And then something came up, y'all. Ooh, here's the opportunity. Here's the opportunity. Something came up. She had to go to a procedure downtown, and she wasn't uh, familiar with the particular area. 
And uh, she didn't have nobody to bring her because she was out there by herself, six to five years old, by herself, and she didn't have anybody to turn to. And so I said, hey, if you don't have anybody to bring you to your procedure and you need some assistance, uh, I'm just letting you know that I'm available to, to do whatever needs to be done to make sure that you are taken care of. She said, you would do that for me after the way that I... That, I, that, I, that I've been treating you and, and, and telling you all, all these months and over this last, you know, year or so. I say, yeah, because, you know, how, how you treat me is independent of what I'm asking you that you might need some help with. I'm willing to help you. And she's like, okay, okay, if you're willing to help, then um, I don't have anybody else. If you can pick me up and bring me, that'd be great. So I not only picked her up, I brought her to the hospital. I waited there for her with her procedure. I took her back to her home and I went and checked on her every day for, for, for a week just to make sure that she was okay, all right? Because, again, when you get cut, what's going to come out? Here's the story that I want to tell you. It's going to tie right back into these, these, these fruits. In her backyard, she had a fig tree. Y'all heard me? In the backyard, she had a, a fig tree. And boy, Pastor C loves some figs, man. I'm from South Louisiana, man. We, we can do some stuff with some figs. You can preserve them, put some sugar. Yeah, I can, I can pop them, right? And boy, she said, you like figs? I said, yeah. And so I went and got me a bag, a little bucket. Well, I got two bags and two buckets, all right? And I pull all the figs off that, man. I, I had me some figs for a long time, all right? Watch it now. Watch it because I'm, I'm about to go back into that scripture, which is the application. So after she was well, every other, like, every other two, three weeks, she would bring me a, a bucket of figs. And this went on for, for a long time. And so I said, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on a second. These figs that you keep bringing me, where are you getting these figs from? She said, I'm getting them off the tree that's in, in, in my backyard. I said, well, hold on a second, because what, where I'm from, there are some, some seasons, okay? And I know figs at a certain time of the year, the leaves fall off, the tree is naked, and the tree is bare, and you can't get any fruit from that particular tree. So you telling me that your tree is bearing fruit all year round? And she said, yeah, it, it always bears fruit all year round. That's how it is in Hawaii because the climate is just so good. And so, boy, my brain kind of went crazy. It went wild because I was like, I get it. I understand why Jesus was so upset at the fig tree because of the climate where the fig tree was at. It was supposed to be bearing fruit year round. I'm telling you, if you connect it to the climate of Jesus, we are supposed to be bearing fruit year round. It's not a season upon season thing. It's the thing that we're supposed to be bearing fruit year round. You're supposed to be bearing fruit. We're supposed to be bearing fruit. We're supposed to be sharing fruit year round. And I'm telling you, this woman, at the end of the cycle of my assignment there, she was coming to church and she was bringing other people to church because, get this, I will mess with you some more. We've been saying that your breakthrough is on the other side of your consistency. How about this? Other people's breakthrough is also on the other side of your consistency. I hope y'all got that this morning. That's, I know that was a long application, but I just had to make sure that I get that out there to you. All right, you got that? So here's your, here, the inspiration, John 15, 5 and 6. The motivation, check your roots and bring some fruit. The application, get juicy, okay? It don't matter what they're saying. It don't matter what they're doing. Go ahead and get juicy and bring it on, okay? Bring it on. It might come from a wall piece of wallpaper at an old restaurant, and it might come from a lady over in the island of Hawaii who had no dealings with you. And here's the caveat. <laughs> I told y'all from Booty, Louisiana, right? At the end of all that dealing with that woman, she said, you from, you said you from Booty, Louisiana? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, I got friends in Booty, Louisiana. We thousands of miles away. I said, who you know in Booty, Louisiana? She said, I know Peter and Murdell Coleman. She said, do you happen to know them? I said, yeah, we go to the same church in Louisiana. I'm telling you, God going to do some crazy things. He going to connect some things. He going to do some things. 
And when it was time for me to leave that assignment, that woman cried like I was her own child. Because your breakthrough is on the other side of your consistency. And other people's breakthrough is on the other side of your consistency. But you got to stay juicy. All right? Father God, let's pray. God, we come to you in the name of Jesus and we thank you for your kingdom business. We thank you for making us juicy on today, Lord God. We thank you, God, that we not only understand that you want us to bear fruit, but we understand also, God, that there's this thing called the fruit of the Spirit. And I thank you, God, that in the fruit of the Spirit, you said that there is love. You want us to love one another. You want us to be able to uh, restore hope and give love to individuals, Lord God. So we thank you that just as Christ loved the church before the church became the church so that we could become the church, that same love that you have bestowed upon us, I thank you that that's the same love that we're restoring and bestowing upon other people, Lord God. We also know, God, that there is peace in the fruit of the Spirit. You don't want us to have anxiety. You don't want us to be uh, undue under pressure, Lord God. But you yourself have said that we can have the peace that surpasses all understanding. No matter what we try to figure it out, no matter how we try to do it, you said that we can have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. And God, you want us to bear much fruit. But under the bearing, Lord God, is the word forbearance. And under the forbearance, Lord God, is the pressure. It's the tactics of the enemy that we have to bear up under so that we can bring you more fruit to add to your kingdom, God. I thank you that you're telling us, you're telling us over and over and over again that if we add to the kingdom, the kingdom will definitely add to us. So I thank you, God, that you also said in the fruit of the Spirit, there is kindness, Lord. You, you, In your word, God, you said that if we want to have friends, we must show ourselves friendly. If we want to be appeasable to people, if we want to be approachable to people, that we must show ourselves friendly. So, God, I thank you that we wipe off our, our consciences that might disfigure our faces to show us to be angry or upset. I thank you, God, that even when we think no one is watching, Lord God, people are watching our actions. We think that it is the kindness of of you that is an attribute that we wish to have. So let us be able to understand and how to deal with people and how to treat people well, no matter how they treat us, that we may exude the kindness of God. We thank you that you want us to exude godliness. The fruit of the Spirit is godliness. And we think that as we go through this walk, we're not perfect. We understand that we don't always have it together. But we understand we serve a God who is able and a God who is in control a God who knows all and a God who can do all. And we're not trying to be exactly like you 100% because we're fallible people. But you said it's possible. <laughs> you said it is possible. So our endeavor is to always push to be the people of God that you have called us to be. And I thank you, God, right now that we're sending up hearts, that we're sending up claps, that we're, we're praising you right there in the middle of all of our situations, knowing that you are a good God, knowing that you are a gracious God, knowing that you are a powerful God, knowing that, that there's some faithfulness that we have to show to continue to move towards the things that you want us to do in this life, Lord God. You also said in the word of God that the laborers, the laborers, the laborers are few. The harvest is out there, but the laborers are few, God. So I think that as we are wanting to be harvesters for your kingdom, that you are giving us the spirit of gentleness, and you are also giving us the spirit of what you would call self-control. Let us not be in uncontrollable situations knowing that you have already made a way of escape. So God, we thank you for these prayers. We thank you for these petitions. We thank you for these people who are on the call. We thank you for these people who are on the Instagram. We thank you for the people who are on Facebook. And I'm telling you, my people, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, make sure that you are sharing the word of God. Why? Because it's biblical, because it's scriptural, Everything that we do at Amazing Church has a scripture attached to it. I just gave you the, uh, the inspiration about the vine and the branches and how you connect it. I gave you the motivation, check your roots and bear some fruit. And I also gave you the application. We want you to be juicy on today. And the final thing, we, we, we spent a little bit of time in prayer. Okay, we spent a little bit of time in prayer. I know you want to get your day going, get your Saturday going. I'm going to put it out there. I'm going about to change some clothes. I'm about to change some clothes and go head on over to the church. We got some wires to run to the church. I mean, what? run some wires, yeah. Because the gospel is going through the wires and going through the air. And if that's what it takes to share some fruit, I'm all in it. All right? So if you're in the Metroplex and you're in the area, you want to come help out and be a part of sharing and spreading this word and spread sharing the gospel, we're going to run some wires. 
Many hands make the load light. Many hands make the load light. Y'all want a nugget? Y'all want a nugget? Here's the nugget for you today. Here's the nugget. If, you, if you're really interested in sharing, okay, if you're really interested in bearing some fruit, make sure that your land is healed, okay? You are, you are an earthen vessel. Make sure that your land is healed so that you can produce the proper fruit. You got that? That's your nugget for the day. If you really want to produce some fruit, make sure first that your land is healed. The land that you have, okay? Your body, your earthen vessel. Make sure that you're healed so that you can produce some proper fruit. Let me go ahead and crank this music up. Let me go ahead and crank this music up. I'm going to send y'all going on out of here. This is uh, in the middle of it. In the middle of it. In the middle of it. Right? Callers, I sincerely thank you for being on here this morning. Pastor Derek, thank you for being on here this morning. Continue to send up some claps and some praises for all that God is doing for you in your life. Thank y'all. Y'all have a great day. Callers, y'all be well. Instagram, Instagram. I see y'all coming in strong. I see you coming in strong. Thank y'all for being here. Praise them anyway. It don't matter what it is. Make sure that you are out there bearing some fruit. Church tomorrow. Church tomorrow. If somebody's asking you to help out and do something, I'm telling you, go ahead and raise your hand. Raise your hand and say, I want to be a part of it because you are helping to share some fruit. Y'all have a great day. Y'all have a great day. Facebook, give me a second while I do this the right way because I gotta, I gotta, I, I can't just shut it down. I gotta make sure I hit the right buttons and save it and everything. Oh, they said that was a problem, but uh, we're gonna, we're gonna figure it out. We're gonna figure it out. Facebook, thank y'all for hanging in there. Thank y'all for hanging in there. Mr. Kyle, I see you. What's that, Trina? Trina Trish. Uh, Sharon Black Weaver, I see you, I see you. Yolanda Taylor, I see you, I see you. Who else coming up in there? I see y'all. That, that's, that's a lot right there. I can't see on the spot. Tanya, Colette, we see you. Straight out of Nola. Stacy, Stacy Marion, we see you, we see you, we see you. Who's that? Roland, all right, I see you. Greg Williams, oh, I see you, I see you, G. I see you, G. But listen, here's the nugget. Here's the, here's, here's the extra nugget for you, all right? Y'all ready? When someone takes a bite of you, all right, we're talking about being juicy. We say when you cut, you got, you got to make sure the thing that's going to come out is the right thing. When somebody take a bite of you, don't surprise them by being a sour grape. <laughs> Y'all got that? If somebody's going to take a bite out of you, don't surprise them by being a sour grape. Now, I'm, I'm, I, gave you, I gave you that. That's a little bit of hype, but I'm hit you on the side of the head now. Janet Jackson had a song called uh, Rhythm, Rhythm Nation album, right? Here's the question for you before I let you go. God said, what have you done for me lately? All right, all right, what have you done for me lately? Y'all got that? Hey, man, let somebody take a bite of you. Don't surprise them by being a sour grape. Y'all be blessed. I'm going to change clothes and head on over to the church. We're going to praise them in the middle of it. Y'all be well. Y'all have a great day. Tomorrow is Sunday. I love y'all.